<laughs> American Pie, come on. <laughs> I'd like to hear you sing. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> All right, Lindsay, thanks. We are following several top stories for you right now. The Air National Guard's been accused of leaking classified Pentagon documents set to appear in federal court today. Straight ahead, why prosecutors say that releasing him on bond could be dangerous. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. You've probably heard about the debt limit debate, but should you and your family really be alarmed? We break down the political realities and when you should really start paying attention. Next. Plus, the ongoing feud between Disney and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis taking another turn with Disney filing a lawsuit. Why the governor believes the suit is political. Script News Live begins right now. We begin right now on Capitol Hill, where the debt ceiling showdown continues. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy putting the plan to a vote where it narrowly passed. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday. Always good to see you. I'm Veronica De La Cruz, and welcome to Scripps News Live. So it's been a contentious uphill battle from the very beginning, with budget cuts never before tied to the country's ability to pay its bills. But the measure now facing defeat in the Senate and a veto from the president should it ever make it to his desk. Scripps News National Political Correspondent Kevin really no stranger to covering these heated political debates. He's also no stranger to Capitol Hill karaoke, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> he joins us now. All right, Kevin, before we get to the karaoke, how does this fight differ and what is at stake right now? Well, they're dug in, but House Speaker Kevin McCarthy getting the support of most nearly all of his caucus in passing last evening, or yes, last evening, his debt ceiling package, but Democrats and President Biden, Veronica, say that it's dead on arrival. Call it the first conservative crack in the debt ceiling. House Republicans voted to pass Speaker Kevin McCarthy's bill that would raise the nation's debt ceiling and cut government funding. But President Biden and Democrats say they will not negotiate so long as budget cuts are included in any negotiations. Happy to meet with McCarthy, but not on whether or not the debt limit gets extended. That's not negotiable. Democrats cannot and will not, for the sake of America and its families, allow Republicans' DOA Act to ever become law. Discussion of spending cuts belongs in talks about the budget, not for bargaining chips on the debt ceiling. Still, the vote is a win for McCarthy, who can now say House Republicans are backing him in the high-stakes debt ceiling negotiations to raise the nation's $31.4 trillion borrowing limit. The president said, well, I'm not going to talk to him until he offers a plan. Not only did we offer a plan, we passed it. So for more than 80 days, he's ignored the problem. The narrow vote provides some assurance to economists that lawmakers are working to raise the nation's debt ceiling and avert the first ever U.S. default sometime in the coming weeks. Economists predict the U.S. will run out of money to pay its bills sometime this summer. And if Washington can't raise the debt ceiling, a default risks sending the U.S. and global economies into an immediate recession. McCarthy's bill would raise the nation's debt limit $1.5 trillion while cutting government funding. Democrats are not in favor of lumping budget cuts with debt ceiling talks. The White House said in a statement earlier this week, McCarthy, quote, cut a deal with the most extreme MAGA elements of his party, end quote. Republicans say it's time for Biden to engage in the process. We are standing up and leading, and it's long past time that President Biden gets off the sidelines and does his job too and gets to the negotiating table with Speaker McCarthy so we can solve this problem and put America on a stronger financial footing that will benefit all Americans. It's time to end this madness. McCarthy lost the support of four Republicans who joined Democrats in opposing the legislation, albeit for very different reasons. And the bill passed by just two votes, 217 to 215, a narrow victory for a Republican speaker who must now negotiate with President Biden and Democrats. The four Republicans who opposed, conservatives Andy Biggs, Tim Borchett, Ken Buck, and Matt Gates. 
Economists agree that should the U.S. default on its debt, it would rattle the economy at a time of already high economic uncertainty. And analysts warn that the U.S. will reach the debt ceiling, the so-called X date, sometime in the coming weeks. So I want to focus in on that X date, Veronica, because economists are predicting that that X date, when the U.S. hits the debt ceiling and then would have to raise it or, or default, that could come earlier than folks had originally anticipated. There have been some talk that it would happen at the end of the summer or even into September. Now there are some estimates, and I spoke to one economist this morning, Veronica, who predicted that we could hit that debt ceiling X date sometime at the end of July. When that X date gets announced, could come as early as the end of next week, potentially. Separately from that, we got some new economic data earlier this morning. Q1 GDP missing the mark of expectations, according to the government, coming in at 1.1 GDP growth, which was down from the 2% uh, estimates. And then when you look at the last three consecutive quarters, uh, as the Fed's been trying to rein in inflation, GDP growth has slowed down, which has as a, a completely different issue that that's why so many folks are thinking with or without raising the debt ceiling, there could be some type of a recession at the end of this year. What's really interesting in all of this, though, Kevin, is the definition of a recession is is two quarters of contracting of a cr contracting economy, and we have yet to see that. Um, so it's interesting, you know, to, to point that out at the end of the day. Uh, Kevin Cerulli on Capitol Hill, not letting you off the hook yet, because I know that you've got some Capitol Hill karaoke in you. I heard you singing American I Pie do. earlier. Oh my goodness. So first. I can't help it. Veronica, I don't mean. Veronica, listen, I just want to say I, I'm not good enough for Coachella. But I, I, you know, when there's a state dinner, and I know there's a lot of parties in Washington this week, Veronica, but, the, you know, it's always the one you don't get invited to, right? But I will say for Senator Chuck Schumer, he showed up in a suit, he didn't go black tie. You know, you know some staffers must have gotten some emails today about <laughs> where was the tux for the Senate Majority Leader. But, uh, but no, no doubt an important showing of just how important that South Korea-United States yeah. uh, alliance is, especially, especially right now. Your invite got lost in the mail. You, you were actually invited to that <laughs> state dinner, Kevin. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word right, for it. I would have worn a tux, even though I don't like it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right, so if a default actually yeah. happens here, the impact on your family could be significant. Interest rates could rise. The market could rattle your retirement plan. Government checks that you depend on could be put at risk. National political correspondent Joe St. George has been tracking all of this for us and explains what you need to know right now. As a political reporter, sometimes I'm jealous of meteorologists. After all, they have a watch and warning system to alert you when something isn't right. A watch tells you it may get rough. An advisory alerts you that something is happening. A warning tells you to really be careful and in some cases, adjust your life. In political reporting, we don't have a warning system when it comes to the debt limit debate or anything else. But by my estimation right now, this debate probably hasn't reached warning status yet, but it is something you're going to want to watch closer in the coming weeks. Let's remind you what we are talking about with the debt limit. The debt limit is the absolute maximum amount the government is allowed to borrow to pay its debts. Right now, it's at $31.4 trillion. The U.S. reached that debt limit back on January 19th. However, since then, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has been deploying what's known as extraordinary measures to keep the economy from defaulting, like limiting investments in federal employees' retirement plans. Once the debt limit is raised again, plans are in place to make those accounts whole again with no impact. But the secretary is starting to run out of maneuvers as well as time. Previously, she said in early June her options could be exhausted. But there are new concerns that that date may be moving up, prompting new warnings for the economy. As a reminder, May begins next week. And that's because the IRS in April has brought in fewer dollars than what was originally forecasted. Lower than expected tax receipts so far are partially the result of a weak stock market that produced a decline in capital gains taxes. As far as the political realities of raising the debt limit, to some degree, little has changed between Democrats and Republicans. On Wednesday, Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy passed the Limit Save Grow Act in the House, which raises the debt ceiling through March of next year, but does so by limiting spending and blocking student loan forgiveness. But Democratic leaders in the Senate have said that will not pass in their chamber.
President Biden saying this Wednesday. Happy to meet with McCarthy, but not on whether or not the debt limit gets extended. That's not negotiable. As a reminder, this debt limit debate is a uniquely American issue. No other major democracy besides Denmark has a debt limit federal law. Congress first enacted it back in 1917, and since 1960, Congress has extended it or raised it 80 times. The U.S. has never defaulted. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. The Air National Guardsman accused of leaking thousands of classified Pentagon documents online is due in court later today. But a late night filing by federal prosecutors shows that officials have serious concerns about 21-year-old Jack Teixeira. National correspondent Maura Sirianni has been looking into these court documents and has more now on why prosecutors are calling him a flight risk more alarming uh, developments when it comes to this story. So among concerns, authorities fear that Jack Teixeira is a flight risk, also pretty much questioning his state of mind. They said he, he tried to destroy potential evidence by smashing electronic equipment um, at his home. Now this filing by federal prosecutors came as Teixeira is set to appear in court in Massachusetts later today when a judge will decide if he should remain in jail. Prosecutors say in part to share a accessed and may still have access to a trove of classified information that would be of tremendous value to hostile nation states that could offer him safe harbor and attempt to facilitate his escape from the U.S. That filing from prosecutors also includes pictures up to Shara's room. You see those here at his mother's home taken shortly after his arrest. The photos appear to show weapons and shooting targets. In the filing, prosecutors say they actually found handguns, rifles, shotguns, AK-style weapons, and a bazooka. Further, authorities say Teixeira tried to destroy evidence when he realized he was about to be arrested, even throwing his phone out the window of a moving truck while driving and smashing his Xbox. Prosecutors also say Teixeira had a history of making violent and racist comments and say they found evidence he researched mass shootings online and even posted about it on social media. The New York Times reporting some of his behavior was so disturbing, local police actually flagged Teixeira as he went to go apply for a firearms ID card. Earlier on the show, Josh Kastenberg, a former lawyer and judge in the Air Force, reacting to that bit of information. But this one's particularly troubling because if the state of Massachusetts or any state, you know, law enforcement agency flags someone, then it's a puzzle why the military um, didn't immediately know or discover it first. Now, the 21-year-old was assigned to the Otis Air National Guard base on Cape Cod and was arrested this month, as we reported, after a massive trove of military records were discovered on the messaging platform Discord. Investigators say they contain details about the war in Ukraine and America's efforts to spy on both enemies and allies. Again, this is highly sensitive information we're talking about here. Meanwhile, the two commanders in Teixeira's unit have been suspended and their security clearances revoked as well. The Air Force says the decision was made as it continues to investigate the nature and scope of this leak, adding that in the future, even more members of his unit could be suspended or removed from their posts. Teixeira has not entered a plea. He also faces, as we mentioned here, two federal charges. Now, if convicted on both, he could be going to prison for 25 years or potentially even longer. Back to you. All right, Mara, thank you so much. Today, defense attorneys are questioning former fashion columnist E. Jean Carroll and her defamation lawsuit against former President Trump. They want to know why it took her so long to come forward with her rape allegations against him and why she can't remember the specific date. Yesterday, Carroll testified the assault happened in the mid-90s and Trump is denying the allegation. She brought the suit in November after she said Trump defamed her in a post calling her allegations a hoax and a lie. He also said, quote, this woman is not my type. Carroll also added battery to her defamation suit now that a New York law says there is no statute of limitations for survivors of alleged sexual assault. The trial is expected to last five days and if found guilty, it would be up to the jury to decide monetary damages. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're going to take you inside the South Korean's president, uh, his address to a joint meeting of Congress. We'll have more when Scripps News Live returns. You're looking pretty good, Mr. Johnson, but we need to take some x-rays today. That's why. Yes, x-rays are expensive, but the front desk said you recently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits that now cover today's x-rays and cleaning costs. 
Wow, well, okay. Well, Medicare Parts A and B do not cover your routine dental coverage like cleanings, fillings, or x-rays. <laughs> yes, you have a Medicare Part C plan, commonly called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Part C plans cover everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Wow. That's great that my plan includes dental coverage that helps pay for these costs. Yes, Mr. Johnson. A Medicare Part C plan could include dental coverage that pays for routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, dental x-rays, fillings, tooth extractions, root canals, dentures, implants, and crowns. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. You don't get a plan with these benefits automatically, so it's always good to call to see if there's a plan with extra benefits available in your zip code. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans available with additional benefits that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. In fact, 24 million Medicare beneficiaries do not have any dental coverage. Here's the good news. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. So call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-614-5203. 800-614-5203. I knew something was wrong when he didn't come home. I saw him unconscious on a respirator. So I told him I would be here for him. What caused this? This wasn't a car accident. What is this? Yeah, it's a little medicine to make you just a little. What is this drug? How is it being used? And is it being used appropriately every time? Injected on In Real Life. New episode Sunday night at 9, 8 central. Only on Scripps News. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol addressed a joint meeting of Congress, and it's part of his six-day visit to the states, marking the 70th anniversary of the alliance between the two countries. President Yoon spent yesterday meeting with President Biden at the White House, and the day ended with a state dinner where he performed a surprise rendition of Don McLean's American Pie. Amazing. Scripps News Congressional Correspondent Stephanie Lieberian live for us at Capitol Hill. And Stephanie, don't worry, I'm not going to make you sing, but I am going to ask you about the, <laughs> <laughs> about the South Korean president's message to Congress today. I understand that he just spoke. He did, Veronica. Good afternoon. He just wrapped up his speech a little while ago. He spoke about 45 minutes to both chambers of Congress in their first joint meeting since um, this session. His message really was a lot of uh, thanks and about cooperation between the United States and South Korea. It's, you know, his visit this week marking the 70th year of the alliance between the two countries. Really thankful for everything that the U.S. has done. He also applauded some economic investment that has been happening now. Both countries investing businesses investing in each other and the jobs that have create, been created by that type of investment and really just kind of saying that the alliance the, the strength of it has really been benefiting both countries take a listen but today our alliance is stronger than ever more prosperous together and more connected like no other indeed it has been the linchpin safeguarding our freedom peace and prosperity. He also spoke about the threats South Korea and other nations are facing, most notably, of course, from the nuclear threat from North Korea. He applauded the agreements that he and President Biden made this week for better cooperation between the U.S. and South Korea um, to counter the nuclear threat from the North. Um, that includes U.S. nuclear submarines being stationed and docked in South Korea for the first time in decades. Um, there are also going to be improved information sharing between the two countries and more training with the military of uh, South Korea and the U.S. military. He also uh, spoke about the threat to democracy and the threat that propaganda and disinformation is playing not only in South Korea, but also in Ukraine and the U.S. and around the world. So this speech kind of caps off his uh, state visit to Washington, D.C. Of course, already met with the president and the vice president and the big state dinner last night. So this is kind of the last big thing on his agenda to wrap up his week, Veronica. All right, Stephanie, we're going to reporting live from Washington. Stephanie, thank you so much.
Overseas right now, Ukraine is getting more assistance in its fight against Russia. NATO Secretary General says member nations ship more than 1,500 armored vehicles, 230 tanks, and other equipment. And that is in addition to what is being described as vast amounts of ammunition. Jan Stoltenberg says NATO also trained nine new Ukrainian brigades, a total of more than 30,000 soldiers. And all this should boost a Ukrainian counteroffensive that's expected soon. And in Sudan, there might be a three-day ceasefire, but it hasn't stopped the fighting in one of its main cities, Darfur. There are battles and looting of shops and homes right now, and it all stems from a fight for power between two Sudanese generals. A fragile three-day truce reduced fighting in Sudan's capital and a neighboring city, and that allowed foreign governments to airlift citizens out of the country and tens of thousands of Sudanese to leave the capital. Straight out on Scripps News Live, the battle between Disney and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis heating up right now. Disney is planning on taking the case to court. Why the governor says that plan has no merit. That's next. Here's TV shark Robert Herchevec for Car Shield. I love cars and I also love great deals. That's why I'm such a fan of Car Shield. They have an amazing deal that helps protect you from the sky high cost of big auto repairs. The check engine light on your vehicle can come on at any time. If your car is out of warranty, an engine replacement can cost over $5,000. A new transmission, over $4,000. Even a new air conditioner can run over $1,500. If you suddenly had to pay those costs, it could really hurt your bottom line. Cost Shield administrators have paid for my claims over $5,000. Now, who does that? Cost Shield, you're the best. A plan that works. When your car or truck breaks down, you simply take it to the certified repair shop or dealer of your choice. Car Shield administrators take care of the rest. And Car Shield gives you VIP treatment. Plans through Car Shield include 24 hour roadside assistance, courtesy towing, and rental car options when your vehicle is being repaired. I did my due diligence. Car Shield is a deal that is just too good to pass up. In fact, Car Shield is America's number one auto protection company. Car Shield administrators have paid out over a billion dollars in claims and have protected millions of vehicles. Call now for a free quote. It's only a matter of time until your vehicle is going to need a repair. Say big with Car Shield. Call now for an instant free quote. Car Shield offers month to month plans for every budget. There are no long term contracts. Car Shield has coverage for vehicles with 5,000 to 150,000 miles. Car Shield experts are standing by now. The sooner you call, the sooner you can drive with peace of mind. Coverage through Car Shield is a deal that is just too good to pass up. If you want to save a lot of money on future auto repair bills, I recommend you call Car Shield now. Call 1 800 680 9870 or go to carshield.com. That's 1 800 680 9870. Call now. Did you make that call? Honey, we already have Medicare. Why do I need to call? Alan, the Feldman said we may be able to get additional benefits with a Medicare Advantage plan right here in our zip code with zero dollar monthly premiums. Honey, what do you mean additional benefits? We turned 65, we got Medicare. That's all there is to it, right? I'm talking about Medicare Part C, commonly called Medicare Advantage. We have traditional Medicare, which is only Medicare Parts A and B, but not Part C. Wait. So not everyone on Medicare is a Part C plan? No. That's why we need to call, because there may be plans available with additional benefits that aren't covered under Medicare Parts A and B. We don't have a Medicare Part C plan, which covers everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits in Medicare Part C. What kind of extra benefits? There are great plans that may be available with extra benefits, like dental, vision, and hearing. Did you say dental? Yes, dental. Medicare Part C plans could include dental benefits that help cover routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, plus dental x-rays, fillings, gum disease treatment, and dentures. We need that. I'm calling. 
If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans with additional benefits available that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. Call now. Now for your free 2023 no obligation Medicare benefits review. Call 800-817-7602. 800-817-7602. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis reportedly launching an exploratory committee for a presidential run as soon as mid-May. Now, the official announcement would come a month later. DeSantis is considered a main challenger to former President Trump for the Republican nomination. In the meantime, state senators in Florida have passed an amendment to allow DeSantis to run for president while still governor. If he was to lose the presidency, he would remain governor. I don't think the suit has merit. I think it's political. I think they filed, you know, in Tallahassee for a reason because they're trying to to generate, um, you, you know, some 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 district court decision. But we're very confident on, on the law. Now that is Governor DeSantis responding to a federal lawsuit that Walt Disney Parks and Resorts filed against him. The suit says DeSantis weaponized his political power to punish Disney for speaking out against his policies. Florida State Capitol reporter Forrest Sanders has more now on Disney's lawsuit. Lawmakers were talking about an elections bill as well as immigration, but that 77-page legal complaint dropped like a bomb, and now Disney v. DeSantis is all anyone here at the Capitol seems to be talking about. The feud that started with Disney's opposition to what critics call the Don't Say Gay bill last year now heading to federal court. The company filed a legal challenge Wednesday alleging the governor and state officials were part of a, quote, targeted campaign of government retaliation. It's after lawmakers approved a takeover of Disney's special district earlier this year, putting in place his state board to oversee the about 40 square miles of land around the Orlando theme parks. Disney says the governor and new board violated First Amendment rights and contracts it signed with the district's old board, Reedy Creek, to maintain power. Quote, in America, the government cannot punish you for speaking your mind, reads the lawsuit. I'm very excited because I think they should have done it a long time ago. Orlando Senator Linda Stewart, among the Democrats who opposed the crackdown on Disney from the beginning, she felt like justice was coming. This is the only way that justice can be heard because they're not listening to the voices. They're not listening to the people. The lawsuit arrives as lawmakers inch closer to sending the governor a new Disney bill to reinforce the state board has authority over the district. While the Senate sponsor didn't comment, other Republicans did. The governor's not going to give up to, to what I know and understand. I'm not speaking for him, but um, Disney will lose this fight. Rep. Fred Hawkins is involved with the House's version of the new bill. He thinks it'll stand no matter how the company's legal challenge turns out. The special district was created by the legislature. The legislature can take it away and doesn't need to have a reason. Purely simply as that. Purely as simple as that. The governor's press team is also weighed in as he continues his trip overseas. Quote, we're unaware of any legal right that a company has to operate its own government or maintain special privileges not held by other businesses in the state. This lawsuit is yet another unfortunate example of their hope to undermine the will of the Florida voters and operate outside the bounds of the law. Disney's filing is likely just the first step in what will be an ongoing legal dispute. We expect that we'll see the governor file a response, and then we may have hearings at the federal court right here in Tallahassee. That's the latest out here at the Capitol. I'm Forrest Saunders reporting. Forrest Saunders reporting there for us. Now, in the lawsuit, Disney says it tried for more than a year to calm tensions and find common ground with DeSantis, adding that the company regrets that it has come to this. Right now, Disney employs about 75,000 people in the state of Florida. So to come on Scripps News Live, what a transgender Montana lawmaker says she will not do, even after House Republicans barred her from speaking on the House floor. I knew something was wrong when he didn't come home. I saw him unconscious on a respirator. I don't know how I'd be here for him. What caused this? This wasn't a car accident. What is this? 
Yeah, a little medicine to make you just a little. What is this drug? How is it being used? And is it being used appropriately every time? Injected on In Real Life. New episode Sunday night at 9, 8 central. Only on Scripps News. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use green light to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with green light. At Rulala, feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names before they're gone. Get in to never miss out. Shop Rulala.com today. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. Experian helped me save over $1,400 a year on car insurance. No prices keep going up. Experian is here to help you save on personal loans, credit cards, or car insurance. See how much you could save free at Experian.com slash save. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. This is an important message for any woman who has ever had ovarian cancer. If you've used talcum or baby powder, you may be entitled to an $8.9 billion settlement. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer and have used a talcum-based powder, a special hotline has been established to see if you qualify. Call now for a free case evaluation. Just call 800-421-0451. A large manufacturer was recently court-ordered to pay $8.9 billion to women diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Studies have shown that women who have long-term use of talcum products such as baby powder may have an increased risk of contracting ovarian cancer. The company knew the risk and knowingly targeted women and their babies. Call now to find out if you or loved ones qualify for significant compensation. You pay zero dollars unless you win. The consultation is free and there is no risk to you. Don't wait. Just call 800-421-0451 now. That's 800-421-0451. I'm Jason Bellini in Ukraine reporting for Scripps News. In a war half a world away. You learn pretty fast when you just survive. There are stories you will never forget. Stay with Scripps News. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Always appreciate you being with us on this Thursday. It's now half past the hour, and here's a look at your top stories right now. Former Cincinnati mayor turned TV host Jerry Springer died earlier today from a brief illness. The show that bared his name often featured brawls, flying chairs, cursing, and blurred images of nudity. It was a guilty pleasure of escapist entertainment for many, but for others, it was a symbol of the dumbing down of America. The Jerry Springer show ran for 27 years. Jerry Springer was 79 years old. Experts say a House bill to raise the debt ceiling. $1.5 trillion will fall flat in the Senate. The Republican-backed bill ties the debt limit to big spending restrictions. The Democratic-controlled Senate will likely vote no, and President Biden has vowed to veto the bill if it does reach his desk. He says he is willing to talk about spending, but not tying it to the debt ceiling. Republicans in the Kansas House overrode the governor's veto to pass what might be the most restrictive transgender bathroom law in the country. The bill requires people to use restrooms associated with their gender at birth, not only at schools, but also in locker rooms, prisons, domestic violence shelters, and rape crisis centers. However, it doesn't say whether violators would be charged or punished. And Montana's first openly transgender representative is now barred from the House chamber, but she can still cast votes remotely, and that will be the case for the rest of the session. Montana's legislature voted to partially censor Representative Zoe Zypher yesterday, and it follows a 34-year-old Democrat's comments to lawmakers earlier this month when she said that they would have, quote, blood on their hands for restricting access to gender-affirming care for young people. Zephyr joined Morning Rush today to discuss how she's being treated and the harm she thinks this could do. I see first and foremost a mismatch between the policies that these legislators, particularly those controlled by the far right, um, are trying to pass and how out of step that is with what uh, Americans actually want. Trans people in our communities are often loved and accepted and we're not 
and we're seeing policies targeting us at an unprecedented level. In Tennessee, when young black lawmakers are talking about the impact that gun violence has, most Americans want common sense gun reform, but these legislatures are not allowing it. So we're seeing young um, legislators rise up and say, no, we, this isn't acceptable, and calling out the real harm that these policies do. And in response, those legislatures are trying to shut down that discussion. And the policy that you were speaking out about uh, was uh, for lawmakers who wanted to ban gender affirming care. You said uh, that they would have blood on their hands if they did so. You were accused of being hyperbolic and perhaps inciting uh, a quote unquote riot with those words, but you were being literal. Tell us a little bit more about what you meant when you said that and what your, your message is in regard to the initial uh, issue that brought you to speak out. And they are, when it comes to gender affirming care, the bans place, it's important to note that they're banning health care that is approved by every major medical association in our country. And there's statistics that we can talk about. There's a 73% reduction in suicidality for trans youth who have access to gender affirming care. But I also see the firsthand experiences. I've lost friends to suicide. I've had friends who've been assaulted, Montanans reaching out about being assaulted on the streets because of policies like this. And we even heard from a family whose trans teenager attempted suicide while listening to one of these anti-trans hearings. So I see the way these bills bring real harm. And when I spoke, what I was doing is holding the legislature accountable for the policies that they were bringing forward. Big picture here for a second, just reading some recent reporting. Across the country, transgender rights have emerged this year as a defining legislative issue, with Republicans enacting sweeping new restrictions in states they control. Legislatures in dozens of states have introduced more than 400 bills targeting trans people since January. At least 29 have become law, more than the total number of such bills passed in all of 2022 in the U.S. Why do you think this is such a lightning rod issue in our country? And why do you think we're seeing such swift legislative action and tough response to it? So I think they are looking, uh, the Republican controlled legislatures are looking for a community that they can other to drum up uh, support for whatever um, their voter base. But I think they're missing the mark because again, trans people are loved and accepted in our communities. And as we're seeing, when you talk about the increase in legislation, it's important to note that a couple years ago, we weren't seeing that. But when they got their foot in the door with bans on trans athletes, that was never their goal. Their goal was to continue to escalate. And that's why we're seeing youth healthcare bans. Missouri, which had its adult healthcare ban that thankfully now has a temporary stay by the courts. Florida passing legislation to allow people to remove children um, if their parent is trans or remove a trans child from their parents. We're seeing an increasing escalation and it's a legislative eradication. And I have a sort of two-part question for you. Republicans in the Montana Freedom Caucus appear to be continually and purposefully misgendering you. Um, I want to know what goes through your mind when that happens, especially given that this word decorum has been thrown around a lot in all of these debates, including the one in Tennessee. It's the use of the word decorum. Decorum could be translated or, or synonymous with the word decency in some ways. Would you? Do you believe that you are being treated indecently um, by these representatives and in turn do you think you could have done something differently to avoid it being barred from the floor or was this the only path you saw forward so it's hypocritical of them to call for decorum at the same time they repeatedly and intentionally misgender me but this is also coming from a caucus that advocates in theory limited government while using government to take away health care from people who need it um and that's what we've seen this legislative session is an unequal and undemocratic application of the fuzzy concept of decorum when the speaker is in agreement there's a lot of leeway given we've heard people claim that my very existence is somehow sexualizing children. And we objected, but we moved on, and that was allowed to go forward. As for would I change anything, when I rose up again, I was talking about real harm that these bills bring, and to apologize or to not have said that would be to be complicit in the policies that get my community 
killed. And that's not what my constituents sent me here to do. They sent me here to speak truth. Now, that was Representative Zoe Zephyr. We're going to continue to follow her story closely for you. In fact, in your next Tower of Scripts News Live, we're going to take a closer look at the state of politics, specifically the recent actions in Montana, also in Tennessee. Will Roberts, acting senior vice president for rights and justice at the Center for American Progress, will be joining us at 1.30 p.m. Eastern to discuss the political discourse and what it could mean for the future in this country. In the meantime, people in Missouri can continue to receive gender-affirming care at least until Monday. A judge temporarily paused a new rule restricting access to care for adults and minors, and it was supposed to take effect today. Members of the transgender community and health care providers filed a lawsuit saying the attorney general overstepped his authority when he put the rules in place. The judge says she needs more time to review the case before deciding whether to issue a temporary restraining order. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're going to take you inside a gym plastered with first place banners, but the kids who earn them are facing an ongoing battle to maintain their confidence. They're not the only team that wins, but because they're an all-black team that wins, it's creating kind of this storm that we don't really want to be a part of. It's really a lot of unfair treatment for the kids. Coming up after the break, the letter that helped these gymnasts rediscover their inner champion. That's next. Attention all Medicare recipients. Did you know you could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month? Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. Get a free Medicare benefits review and see if you qualify. Just call 800-396-0918. This program helps lower Medicare costs like premiums, deductibles, and co-insurance. You may also qualify for a Medicare Advantage plan with additional benefits at no cost to you. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to check your eligibility. Just call 800-396-0918. You could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. You don't get these savings automatically. Call now. There is no obligation to enroll. The call and Medicare benefits review are free. That's 800-396-0918. Attention all Medicare recipients. Did you know you could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month? Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. Get a free Medicare benefits review and see if you qualify. Just call 800-396-0918. This program helps lower Medicare costs like premiums, deductibles, and co-insurance. You may also qualify for a Medicare Advantage plan with additional benefits at no cost to you. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to check your eligibility. You could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. You don't get these savings automatically. Call now. There is no obligation to enroll. The call and Medicare benefits review are free. Just call 800-396-0918. That's 800-396-0918. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket, and this, this is a filet mignon. 
For a limited time, our Burger Perfection Flight comes with 20 big, juicy burgers, all for just $79.99, plus free shipping. Get it today at omahasteaks.com slash TV. This is Burger Perfection, guaranteed. We need a small business loan fast. I got this. Loan Falcon! There's a better way to get a fast small business loan. Go to ondeck.com, and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Your loan is on deck. There shouldn't be a stigma around talking about mental health or taking medication for your anxiety if that's what you need to feel better. And that's something I know firsthand. That's why I trust HERS. They help women access quality mental health care 100% online. Get started today at forhers.com. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. So staying strong in the face of adversity is much easier said than done. But the group of girls that you're about to meet refuse to let adversity steal what makes them shine. Scripps News correspondent Stephen Graddock has their inspiring story. Every night of the week in this makeshift gym on the east side of Atlanta, Georgia, 53 young athletes spin, flip, and twirl under the guidance of a coach that has instilled values that go far beyond the mat. Champion Mindset Gymnastics is one of the only all-black gymnastics facilities in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's also a nonprofit gym. And I always tell my kids it's more than being a champion because everybody can win, but it's the mindset that goes with being a champion. A mindset that's kept Sequoia and her team undefeated over the past two years. But beyond the gold, you never know the real obstacles they've had to overcome to get there. Right now, like equipment-wise, is one of the biggest things we need, like our uneven bar rails. We have them, they are falling apart. Our mats on beam, if you lift them up, it's foam falling all over the floor. So we need a lot of repair to the equipment that we have now. I don't work anywhere else, I don't do anything else. This takes everything in me to keep it going. In spite of their setbacks, Sequoia says their success has also made them a target of prejudice. We're not the only team that wins, but because they're an all black team that wins, it's creating kind of this storm that we don't really want to be a part of. It's really a lot of unfair treatment for the kids. Searching for solutions, Sequoia wrote a letter to Jermaine Horton, CEO and founder of the Art of Confidence Project, a nonprofit aimed to help empower children of color and restoring their confidence using artistry and imagery. I was literally reading the email in tears because I was like, hey, I need you to give me a statement. Tell me about what's going on. And I was expecting like, you know, like a few words or a paragraph. She had an Aaliyah four page letter and I was like, coach, whatever it takes, whatever I need to do, I will be down there to do whatever I can to lend my resources to help you and these amazing girls at this gym. So we hopped on a plane from Chicago to feature the gymnasts in a series Jermaine says is centered around regaining power. We have two major parts of our series. We have one is the empowerment and then one is the release. The release is where we have them look into the camera and we just let them scream. They just let all of it out. And then we do holding of the fist for them to regain their power back. So whatever they felt was stripped away from them, they regain that power back and they display it for the camera and display it for the world. For the parents watching from the sidelines, they say they've witnessed a remarkable shift since joining the team. She was doing handstands on the wall. And so uh, we would go to our brother's football games and one of the parents say, you should put her in gymnastics and they suggested a place for me to take her and our journey began there. A journey that would soon make her daughter a national champion in 2019. I like the feeling of winning and being able to do the sport that I love. I want people to know that like just because they win doesn't mean it's easy. I mean, we're going against these gyms that are in these multi-million dollar facilities that have, you know, more equipment that I could count on one hand. And these girls work really hard because we have limited access to things. Their determination captured in a series of images for the world to see and hopefully inspire others. I just wanted to give back and let children see what they look like through my lens. And when the parents and the children actually see the actual photo, it's like, whoa, wow, like that's me? Imagine if they had the best of the best. Even if it's not new equipment, if it's just the repairs done, where and how much further can this group go? I'm Stephen Graddick, Scripps News. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, a Taiwan-based company making luxury travel more accessible for everyday people in the United States. Luxury should not be the exclusive experience of the elite, but readily available to everyone. We're going to take you inside one of its planes where even the economy seats will make a passenger feel 
like royalty. Also, we'd like to remind you right here to follow us at Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser, and did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-394-2715. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week, and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-394-2715. That's 800-394-2715. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. And checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there's an issue. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit lifelock.com slash 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. When what's happening in the world hits home. What strikes me is how many children are here. And when reporting the news matters the most. Scripps News reports tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. 52 minutes after the hour, let's get you some business news now. Profits down for the world's largest memory chip maker. Samsung Electronics reporting a 95% drop for the first quarter. That is the company's lowest profit in 14 years. Samsung says the low demand for tech gadgets contributed to this decline. Record high inflation has forced consumers to cut back on purchases. And the weak demand also is forcing the company to slash chip prices, which eventually led to production cuts. So luxury travel is coming closer to reality for everyday people right now. A Taiwanese company just landed its first U.S. flight yesterday. Scripps News correspondent James Packard is in Los Angeles with a closer look at flying commercial in the lap of luxury. There's a very new, very fancy airline in town here at Los Angeles International Airport, Starlux, traveling now to the U.S. from Taipei. It bills itself as a luxury airline, which is interesting because here in the U.S., more and more travelers want budgets. They want ultra low cost, no frills, and this airline plans to do the exact opposite. In a world where behemoth legacy airlines dominate and the only ones daring enough to start a new airline are those going after travelers on an ultra-tight budget, a new company is bucking the trend. 
It's going to be a real uphill battle for them to win market share and actually be successful. Starlux Airlines, a Taiwan-based carrier, just launched service to the U.S., billing itself as a luxury airline. Luxury should not be the exclusive experience of the elite, but readily available to everyone. We just got on Starlux plane for the first time, and everybody's first class is fancy, so I came back to economy. It's still pretty fancy back here. It even smells good in here, and Starlux says their whole thing is about delighting and soothing the senses. When was the last time you heard an airline say that? They even have color schemes and lighting in here. It's just not typical. Starlux is partnering with Alaska Airlines to allow passengers on both airlines to earn miles with their preferred carrier. It's a move Starlux hopes will attract U.S. customers. But Trans-Pacific flights are usually a money-losing venture for U.S. airlines. And the U.S. is home to the strongest demand globally for low-cost plane travel, according to the consulting firm CDI. So what about that makes this new airline team think a luxury Trans-Pacific flight is a winning recipe? You know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, uh, disagree. I mean, the, uh, the American passengers are only uh, fly on cheap. Uh, well, we segregate the uh, 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 different market. Uh, we, from very beginning, we target, uh, position ourselves, uh, premium uh, carriers. Price is the ultimate thing that people will book on. And if Starlux is going to charge extra for a better experience, they will get a few customers paying for it, but it's going to be really hard for them. While round-trip fares to Taipei run about $1,200 on Starlux, fairly typical, the new competition for Trans-Pacific routes could drive prices down for U.S. travelers. But in the long term, could this new airline start to pressure the industry to bring back the good old days of flying when comfort and style was the name of the game? If the prices were to come up down the road, but people have experienced your product, are you confident that people would be willing to pay a little more? For yes, this? yes. That's, that's, that's what we think. James Packard, Scripps News, Los Angeles. So Starlux is currently in an expansion phase, only offering U.S. flights through Los Angeles right now. The airline is looking to add stops, though, in San Francisco and in New York City. And before we go to break, some exciting news to share with you. Starting this coming Monday, May 1st, Scripps News is going all live from 6 a.m. Eastern through 10 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, which means that you can count on us to have all the latest at any time of the day across all platforms. The same independent, objective news and on-the-ground reporting you love it is live all day beginning this monday and keep it right here there's more news in your next hour of scripts news live i'm veronica de la cruz and we are back after this This is an important message for anyone and everyone on or eligible for Medicare. If Medicare is important to you, then you need to hear this message because Medicare benefits matter to millions of Americans. Did you know Medicare has different parts, including Medicare Part A and Part B, often called original Medicare? And then there's Medicare Part C, representing Medicare Advantage plans, and Part D for prescription drug coverage. Call 800-912-2786 now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. We can look up your plan and see if you're missing out on a plan with extra benefits or if your income qualifies you to reduce costs on your prescription medications. Did you know there are different enrollment periods like the Medicare annual enrollment period when beneficiaries can enroll in or change coverage? But there are also certain conditions or qualifications that may allow you to qualify for a special enrollment period any time of the year. So call the number on your screen now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. This is a free service that you can call at absolutely no cost to you. I'm on Medicare. I called to see if my income qualified for lower prescription medication costs. The friendly agent was very knowledgeable and I found out I qualified for a special enrollment period. So I'm so glad I called. We can look up your plan and see if you are missing out on a plan with extra benefits. We can also check to see if your income qualifies you to reduce the cost of your prescription medications. And we can even tell you if you qualify for a special enrollment period. It's your free Medicare coverage checkup at absolutely no cost to you. Just call 800-912-2786. And you can speak with a licensed agent who can check up on your plan and answer your questions. The Medicare Benefits and Questions line is open and anyone on or eligible for Medicare can call. The call and Medicare coverage checkup is free with no obligation. Call now. We love talking to people with Medicare, and the call is free. Just call 800-912-2786. 800-912-2786. 
Now we'd be in the center on Capitol Hill where the debt ceiling showdown continues. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy put the plan to a vote where it narrowly passed. Thank you so much for staying with us on this Thursday. It's now 1 p.m. in the east and 10 a.m. out west. Great to see you today. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. So it's been a contentious uphill battle from the start, with budget cuts never before tied to the country's ability to pay its bills. But the measure is now facing defeat in the Senate and a veto from the president should it ever make it to his desk. Scripps News National Political Correspondent Kevin Cirilli has more now from Capitol Hill. House Republicans backing Speaker Kevin McCarthy's proposal to raise the debt ceiling, but Democrats and President Biden say it's dead on arrival. Call it the first conservative crack in the debt ceiling. House Republicans voted to pass Speaker Kevin McCarthy's bill that would raise the nation's debt ceiling and cut government funding. But President Biden and Democrats say they will not negotiate so long as budget cuts are included in any negotiations. Happy to meet with McCarthy, but not on whether or not the debt limit gets extended. That's not negotiable. Democrats cannot and will not, for the sake of America and its families, allow Republicans' DOA Act to ever become law. Discussion of spending cuts belongs in talks about the budget, not for bargaining chips on the debt ceiling. Still, the vote is a win for McCarthy, who can now say House Republicans are backing him in the high-stakes debt ceiling negotiations to raise the nation's $31.4 trillion borrowing limit. The president said, well, I'm not going to talk to him until he offers a plan. Not only did we offer a plan, we passed it. So for more than 80 days, he has ignored the problem. The narrow vote provides some assurance to economists that lawmakers are working to raise the nation's debt ceiling and avert the first ever U.S. default sometime in the coming weeks. Economists predict the U.S. will run out of money to pay its bills sometime this summer. And if Washington can't raise the debt ceiling, a default risks sending the U.S. and global economies into an immediate recession. McCarthy's bill would raise the nation's debt limit $1.5 trillion while cutting government funding. Democrats are not in favor of lumping budget cuts with debt ceiling talks. The White House said in a statement earlier this week, McCarthy, quote, cut a deal with the most extreme MAGA elements of his party, end quote. Republicans say it's time for Biden to engage in the process. We are standing up and leading, and it's long past time that President Biden gets off the sidelines and does his job too and gets to the negotiating table with Speaker McCarthy so we can solve this problem and put America on a stronger financial footing that will benefit all Americans. It's time to end this madness. McCarthy lost the support of four Republicans who joined Democrats in opposing the legislation, albeit for very different reasons. And the bill passed by just two votes, 217 to 215, a narrow victory for a Republican speaker who must now negotiate with President Biden and Democrats. The four Republicans who opposed, conservatives Andy Biggs, Tim Borchett, Ken Buck, and Matt Gates. Economists agree that should the U.S. default on its debt, it would rattle the economy at a time of already high economic uncertainty. And analysts warn that the U.S. will reach the debt ceiling, the so-called X date, sometime in the coming weeks. All attention turns now when precisely the United States will hit that X date. I spoke with one economist who predicted we could get that X date announcement sometime next week. Separately from that, the government putting forth GDP numbers earlier today, and they missed market expectations. Market watchers were hoping for 2% GDP growth in Q1. They only got 1.1% GDP growth, trending downward of GDP growth for the last three consecutive quarters, all leading to this angst and uncertainty that we might be headed towards some type of a recession later this year. Kevin Cirilli, Scripps News, Washington. All right, so here's the thing. If a default actually happens, the impact on your family could be significant. Interest rates could rise. The market could rattle your retirement plan. And government checks that you depend on could be put at risk. National political correspondent Joe St. George has been tracking all of this for us and explains what you need to know. 
As a political reporter, sometimes I'm jealous of meteorologists. After all, they have a watch and warning system to alert you when something isn't right. A watch tells you it may get rough. An advisory alerts you that something is happening. A warning tells you to really be careful, and in some cases, adjust your life. In political reporting, we don't have a warning system when it comes to the debt limit debate or anything else. But by my estimation right now, this debate probably hasn't reached warning status yet, but it is something you're going to want to watch closer in the coming weeks. Let's remind you what we are talking about with the debt limit. The debt limit is the absolute maximum amount the government is allowed to borrow to pay its debts. Right now, it's at $31.4 trillion. The U.S. reached that debt limit back on January 19th. However, since then, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has been deploying what's known as extraordinary measures to keep the economy from defaulting, like limiting investments in federal employees' retirement plans. Once the debt limit is raised again, plans are in place to make those accounts whole again with no impact. But the secretary is starting to run out of maneuvers as well as time. Previously, she said in early June her options could be exhausted. But there are new concerns that that date may be moving up, prompting new warnings for the economy. As a reminder, May begins next week. And that's because the IRS in April has brought in fewer dollars than what was originally forecasted. Lower than expected tax receipts so far are partially the result of a weak stock market that produced a decline in capital gains taxes. As far as the political realities of raising the debt limit, to some degree, little has changed between Democrats and Republicans. On Wednesday, Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy passed the Limit Save Grow Act in the House, which raises the debt ceiling through March of next year, but does so by limiting spending and blocking student loan forgiveness. But Democratic leaders in the Senate have said that will not pass in their chamber. President Biden saying this Wednesday. Happy to meet with McCarthy, but not on whether or not the debt limit gets extended. That's not negotiable. As a reminder, this debt limit debate is a uniquely American issue. No other major democracy besides Denmark has a debt limit federal law. Congress first enacted it back in 1917, and since 1960, Congress has extended it or raised it 80 times. The U.S. has never defaulted. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. So it's been a contentious uphill battle from the start with budget cuts never before tied to the country's ability to pay its bills. But the measure is now facing defeat in the Senate and a veto from the president should it ever make it to his desk. We're going to have much more on that story coming up. But in the meantime, we want to get you to something else at this hour. We're going to take a closer look right now at something playing out in court. The Air National Guardsman accused of leaking thousands of classified Pentagon documents is due in court later today. But a late night filing by federal prosecutors shows that officials have serious concerns about 21-year-old Jack Teixeira. Prosecutors are saying that he discussed violence and murder on the social media platform where authorities said that he leaked those documents. There were also talks about making an assassination van. Teixeira has been charged under the Espionage Act and has not yet entered a plea. And in other news at this hour, a major policy regarding the southern border scheduled to come to an end in about two weeks. Former President Trump put Title 42 into place and it has continued under the Biden administration. I want to get you live right now to Washington, where our White House correspondent Haley Bull has been tracking the story for us and joins us now live. Haley, what exactly can you tell us about Title 42 coming to an end? Good afternoon, Veronica. This is something that the administration has been preparing for and pressed on, facing a lot of questions uh, for how this would play out when they revert to Title VIII. Uh, uh, effort used across administrations uh, pre-pandemic. Uh, but they're announcing a sweeping series of actions today ahead of that ending in May. Uh, and this includes an effort to increase access to safer pathways for people to reach the U.S. and increasing consequences for illegal entry. But notably, this approach moves beyond just the border, uh, taking a regional approach here to it, partnering with other countries. It includes expanded access to the U.S. Refugee Resettlement Program and standing up processing centers that will be run by international partners. Secretary of State Antony Blinken called it a new innovative approach as it takes efforts from the State Department and Homeland Security into account. At these centers is where people will be screened for resettlement eligibility or be referred to another pathway or options in the host country. Colombia and Guatemala officials say are expected to roll out centers while Canada and 
and Spain, officials say, have indicated a willingness to accept referrals. Uh, officials expect several thousand to be processed in this manner each month. Uh, at the same time, though, officials say there will be more expedited removal processing at the border with CPB facilities uh, undergoing some changes to accommodate that process. Secretary Mayorkas also said that he has made a direction uh, for a family reunification process for people in El Salvador, Colombia, Guatemala, and Honduras. Uh, and administration officials say this effort uh, is modeled after what they did with Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela earlier this year, uh, which they say showed a successful reduction uh, in attempted border crossings. Listen. And in January, President Biden committed to welcoming 30,000 individuals every month from Cuba, Haiti, Venezuela, and Nicaragua through a parole program. Irregular migration from those four countries fell by more than 97 percent within the first month because people now have a legal and safe pathway. Everyone agrees our immigration system is outdated and badly broken. We must tackle the challenges before us together. This includes the potential for increases in migration after May 11 and the strain it will place on our communities, our workforce, and our system. That's why today we notified Congress of our intent to reprogram funds within our budget to support other emerging requirements across DHS. And you heard right there, Secretary Mayork is calling on Congress to take action as well, saying that the existing funds in the budget uh, don't meet the cut for what the long-term needs are here. Uh, while they say they recognize the vulnerability to litigation uh, in some of these steps, uh, the administration also, also feels that they're on solid footing uh, legally. But as we approach the end of Title 42, uh, they are expecting to have more encounters at the southern border, uh, seeing that they're having to now counter disinformation efforts and reiterate that the border is not open. Uh, but the administration, as you know, has been dealing uh, with a surge of migration ahead of this. Uh, and as we reach the end of Title 42, they have been pressed more and more for answers on how they would handle this. It has been a point of criticism uh, for the White House in particular from Republicans on border security. Uh, what we are hearing today is the most substantial answer so far on how they plan to address this, Veronica. All right, Haley Blue reporting live from the White House for us. Haley, we always appreciate it. Thank you. Getting it out to New York today, defense attorneys questioning former fashion columnist E. Jean Carroll and her defamation lawsuit against former President Trump. They want to know why it took her so long to come forward with her rape allegations against him and why she can't remember the specific date. Yesterday, she testified the assault happened in the mid-90s. Trump is denying the allegation, and she brought the suit in November after she said that Trump defamed her in a post, calling her allegations a hoax and a lie. He also said, quote, this woman is not my type. Carroll also added battery to her defamation suit now that a New York law says there is no statute of limitations for survivors of alleged sexual assault. That trial is expected to last five days, and if found guilty, it would be up to the jury to decide monetary damages. So to come on Scripps News Live, a transgender Montana lawmaker now barred from speaking on the House floor. We're going to have the details on the fallout and what could be next for Representative Zoe Zephyr. Also, nearly three months after a toxic train derailment, people in East Palestine, Ohio, are still living in limbo. Coming up next, a closer look at their struggle to find some sort of normalcy. Here's TV shark Robert Herchevec for Car Shield. I love cars and I also love great deals. That's why I'm such a fan of Car Shield. They have an amazing deal that helps protect you from the sky high cost of big auto repairs. The check engine light on your vehicle can come on at any time. If your car is out of warranty, an engine replacement can cost over $5,000. A new transmission, over $4,000. Even a new air conditioner can run over $1,500. If you suddenly had to pay those costs, it could really hurt your bottom line. Cross Shield administrators have paid for my claims over $5,000. Now, who does that? Cross Shield, you're the best. A plan that works. When your car or truck breaks down, you simply take it to the certified repair shop or dealer of your choice. CarShield administrators take care of the rest. 
and CarShield gives you VIP treatment. Plans through CarShield include 24-hour roadside assistance, courtesy towing, and rental car options when your vehicle is being repaired. I did my due diligence. CarShield is a deal that is just too good to pass up. In fact, CarShield is America's number one auto protection company. CarShield administrators have paid out over a billion dollars in claims and have protected millions of vehicles. Call now for a free quote. It's only a matter of time until your vehicle is going to need a repair. Say big with CarShield. Call now for an instant free quote. CarShield offers month-to-month -month plans for every budget. There are no long-term contracts. CarShield has coverage for vehicles with 5,000 to 150,000 miles. CarShield experts are standing by now. The sooner you call, the sooner you can drive with peace of mind. Coverage through CarShield is a deal that is just too good to pass up. If you want to save a lot of money on future auto repair bills, I recommend you call CarShield now. Call 1-800-680-9870 or go to carshield.com. That's 1-800-680-9870. Call now. This is The Upside. Where we shine a light on the brighter side of news. Anybody can do it, any age. Every day, we're bringing you stories from all across America. Uh, with authority. We're all unique in our own way. Of good people. Give a stranger a high five. Doing good things. This is my purpose. If it's lifting me, it will lift future generations. Because everything's a little better when we focus on The Upside. Today at 4.33.30 Central on Scripps News. Ahead to 2024, the West Virginia Senate race just got a little more justice, I guess you could say. And that is because West Virginia Republican Governor Jim Justice is set to announce his bid for a U.S. Senate seat today. He's looking to run for the seat currently held by moderate Democratic Senator and former Governor Joe Manchin. This could be the biggest threat to Manchin's seat in a dozen years. Governor Justice will face off against at least one other candidate in the Republican primary, Representative Alex Mooney, a Freedom Caucus member. Let's get you right out to Congressional Correspondent Nathaniel Reed from reporting from Capitol Hill. All right, Nate, uh, a lot to talk about here because the paperwork is filed. But when can we actually expect a formal announcement from Governor Jim Justice? That's right. Well, that formal paperwork with the Federal Election Commission going in earlier this morning, officially making... Uh, uh, Jim Justice, the current governor of West Virginia, eligible for the ballot in that state to seek Joe Manchin's current seat in the U.S. Senate. We still do not know if Senator Joe Manchin is going to run for re-election. He's been fairly tight-lipped on that. But if he does, there's a good chance that Jim Justice could give him a run for his money. That an official announcement expected sometime in the late afternoon. He's got an event announced at the Greenbrier Resort in West Virginia uh, later today at about 5 p.m. Eastern. At that point, uh, we'll expect him to make this announcement official. He is a largely popular governor of West Virginia. And though there isn't a whole ton of polling in this race, there was some polling conducted all the way back in last August of 2022, which put hypothetical matchups of uh, Joe Manchin against his possible challengers, one of whom, of course, being Jim Justice, who is expected to make that official today. That hypothetical polling showed Joe Manchin losing in a landslide with Governor Jim Justice taking 46.5 percent of likely voters, just 32 percent of those potential voters saying they would vote for Joe Manchin. Now, let's take a look at what Joe, how Joe Manchin would fare against Alex Mooney. He would also be expected to lose that race. Joe Manchin with 37.9% of likely voters saying they'd vote for him, 44.9% of voters saying they'd vote for Congressman Alex Moody, who represents West Virginia in Congress. So obviously these are fairly old numbers, 3.5% margin of error. This poll was conducted way back in August of 2022. We don't have a lot of numbers from West Virginia, but just to give you a sense of where things stand with Joe Manchin, just in the last couple of days, he's threatened to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act, his uh, most consequential piece of legislation from the last Congress, but at the same time, one that's quite unpopular with Republicans. West Virginia is an overwhelmingly Republican state. In a way, as a Democrat from an overwhelmingly Republican state, he is somewhat of a dying breed. I want to talk about some of these other matchups, though, Nate, uh, looking ahead to the 2024 Senate races, because Senator Manchin doesn't really seem to be the only one in the hot seat. Um, what are some of the other states that you're keeping a close eye on right now? 
Well, Veronica, there's no sugarcoating it. Democrats have a really tough map to defend in 2024. If they got by easy in 2022, it's by no means going to be a cakewalk in 2024. For one, they're dealing with Kirsten Cinema in Arizona. She is now an independent, ran last time as a Democrat, running for re-election in that state, potentially as an independent. She has not yet made a firm determination there. She already has a possible Democratic challenger, Re Representative Ruben Gallego, and a possible Republican challenger Mark Lamb, the Pinal County uh, uh, Sheriff. Over in Montana, John Tester, he's uh, expected to, he's saying that he's running for re-election. That's another red Republican state where he could face a really tough uphill battle. Also, Sherrod Brown in the state of Ohio, uh, he is someone who could run for re-election as well. So it's really, uh, those are just a couple of states where Democrats are going to be facing uphill battles, trying to get their candidates re-elected. Uh, of course, we do not know a lot about how those races will unfold. There's still primaries to be had and much more. But at the same time, uh, it's a really tough map for Democrats across the board. Joe Manchin could be potentially, depending on whether he runs, the first to go. Hmm, very interesting. All right, Nathan Reed reporting live for us from Capitol Hill. Nate, always appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, Norfolk Southern releasing the cost of that toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. But the harm it caused the community is immeasurable. I just keep thinking, well, where am I going to be? Is anybody even gonna still be trying to help us. After a quick break, a look at the ongoing struggle for people to rebuild their lives. That's next. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with free installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi Bath Remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they didn't just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get free installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for one year. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-218-1279. That's 800-218-1279. Call now. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket, and this, this is a filet mignon. For a limited time, our burger perfection flight comes with 20 big juicy burgers, all for just $79.99, plus free shipping. Get it today at omahasteaks.com slash TV. This is burger perfection guaranteed. Sure, you should teach him to ride a bike. Then, use Greenlight and teach him how to invest in bikes. Teach him to be smart about money, and he'll go far. Super far! Oh, hey, Mom! Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. At Rue La La, feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names before they're gone. Get in to never miss out. Shop RueLaLa.com today.
This is an important legal announcement for all firefighters, first responders, airport workers, members of the military, and their families. Firefighter occupational cancer is the leading cause of deaths in the fire service. Cancer accounted for more than 74% of deaths in 2022. You may have been exposed to chemical-based firefighting foam known to cause cancer. If you or a loved one were exposed, you may be entitled to significant cash compensation. Call the number on your screen now for your free case consultation. Aqueous Film Forming Foam, or AFF, has been used to extinguish fires for years. Studies now show there are highly toxic chemicals used to make this foam. These chemicals can cause many types of cancer and illnesses. Call now to see if you're eligible for the cash compensation you deserve without having to go to court. The call and consultation are absolutely free. The time to file your claim is limited, so don't wait and call now. Just call 800-346-7670 now. That's 800-346-7670. Seven six seven zero. In Ohio, some East Palestine residents have yet to return home after that toxic train derailment on February 3rd. Health concerns remain as people continue to report potential symptoms from the wreck. Scripps News correspondent Morris Sirianni shows us the constant struggle to get things back to normal. One resident described the process of selling her home as a nightmare. Most people I spoke with in East Palestine said they didn't want to leave their homes. Now some residents may not have a choice. It's been nearly three months since a Norfolk Southern train derailed in East Palestine, Ohio. The huge black plume of smoke from the controlled burn of toxic chemicals is gone. But the fears about whether it's safe to live here remain. I, I love this home, but you can't get attached to it. Three generations of Christina Ferguson's family have lived in this 1930s duplex in East Palestine. Now she's staying with her parents in a condominium the railroad rented 10 miles away. To return, she wants independent testing and a thorough cleaning of their home. But she's not sure her family will ever feel safe in their home again. I just keep thinking, well, where am I going to be? Is anybody even going to still be trying to help us? What's the next step? Do they just knock on the door and say, hey, you have to be out tomorrow? <laughs> About half of East Palestine's 5,000 residents evacuated when officials decided to burn the vinyl chloride from five tanker cars to prevent an explosion. Most residents have returned, but many complain of illness and worry about contamination. Others, like Jeff Drummond, aren't allowed to return because of the continued cleanup near their homes. He's living alone in a tiny room in a roadside motel now, the retired truck driver and Gulf War veteran misses mowing his lawn and spending time in his yard. I can't do my own cooking. I have to go out and do my own laundry. I have a washer and dryer at home that I can't use. You know, it, 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 I have nothing here basically, it just a room. Norfolk Southern is excavating thousands of tons of contaminated soil. The Environmental Protection Agency expects that to take another two to three months. Toxic chemicals must be removed from two creeks, which could take even longer. In the meantime, displaced residents wait to see what the future holds. We'll go back if we can. Absolutely. And if we can't, I can accept that too, because I'm like Chrissy. I pray all the time and I tell God, you know, whatever you have for me, I can do for you. On the heels of a CNN town hall, Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw announced the rail company would work with the community to address concerns about losses in home values, although specific details of a plan have not yet been made public. Mara Sirianni, Scripps News, Atlanta. And still to come on Scripps News Live, what a transgender Montana lawmaker says she will not do, even though House Republicans have barred her from speaking on the House floor. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser, and did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. 
Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-379-8435. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. 800-379-8435. That's 800-379-8435. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. On the stories that will shape each day. There's a new study that might make you feel a little bit better. So you can get on with yours. Morning Rush. Weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News. Welcome back. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. It is now half past the hour. Thank you so much for being with us today for Scripps News Live. Well, Montana's first openly female transgender representative is now banned from the House chamber. She can still cast votes remotely the rest of the session. National correspondent Maritza Giorgio says that it all stems from 34-year-old Democrat Zoe Zephyr saying that lawmakers would have blood on their hands for restricting access to gender-affirming care for young people. Yeah, good day to you. This means that Representative Zoe Zephyr is barred from the floor for the rest of the session, which is set to end in early May. And important to note, these are two-year terms, and our legislature in Montana only meets every other year. And so this is uh, not only not only the rest of the session, but the rest of her term. It's the first time in nearly half a century the Montana lawmakers have censured one of their own members. And it comes after a week-long standoff that we have been telling you about here all week on Scripps News. It reached a fever pitch on Monday when her supporters filled the gallery and disrupted the House floor session with chants of let her speak. Police escorted them out, some in riot gear. Seven people were arrested. And while that was going on, Zephyr stood on the floor with a microphone held in the air the entire time. Republican lawmakers said that action was what led to this disciplinary measure, saying that she incited them and saying that those events put the lawmakers at risk. Now, before the vote on Wednesday to bar her from the floor, Zephyr was allowed five minutes to speak. And she joined us here on Morning Rush earlier this morning, talking about why these issues matter so much to her and her community. When I rose up again, I was talking about real harm that these bills bring and to apologize or to not have said that would be to be complicit in the policies that get my community killed. And that's not what my constituents sent me here to do. They sent me here to speak truth. Representative Zephyr can still vote remotely and participate in committees. She just cannot comment on active debate over legislation. We caught up with her when she left the floor for the last time this session. She says she wouldn't change any of her actions. She's proud she stood up for her community. And we also heard from Republican Speaker of the House, Matt Regeer, right after that vote, who said they didn't choose expulsion, but thought this was a fair punishment for her actions. My job, listen, and it's not, uh, I, I know that there's a lot of extracurricular um, reasons that, uh, especially the media that you guys have put into this, and it is not. It is uh, me as the speaker just protecting the dignity and safety and integrity of the House, no matter what, uh, no matter what uh, happens. And we, so we can't have that kind of behavior uh, on the floor moving forward. I did ask Speaker Regeer directly if there have been any instances of violence or threats of violence during Monday's protest that we haven't heard about. He said no, but that police were in riot gear, and that's why he classifies this as a riot. Now, we did also ask Representative Zephyr about decorum. 
Here's what Representative Zephyr told Morning Rush earlier this morning about that. It's hypocritical of them to call for decorum at the same time they repeatedly and intentionally misgender me. But this is also coming from a caucus that advocates, in theory, limited government while using government to take away health care from people who need it. Um, and that's what we've seen this legislative session is an unequal and undemocratic application of the fuzzy concept of decorum. When the speaker is in agreement, there's a lot of leeway given. Now, there's still a lot to get done in Helena. It seems both parties are eager to get back to it today so they can go home. Before Zephyr left the floor, she tweeted out a photo of her pressing her light to speak one last time. She says it's a reminder that the legislature is removing 11,000 Montanans from discussion on every bill going forward. Back to you. Zoe Zephyr isn't the first lawmaker silence for speaking their mind on an issue. Zephyr isn't even the first in the past month. Just a couple weeks ago, we saw the same thing happen with the Tennessee Three. Three Democratic Tennessee State House members protesting on the House floor against gun rights. Now, two were expelled, but have since returned to their seats. Both of these votes to censure or expel fellow lawmakers came from Republican-led houses. Could this be a growing trend of retaliation at the state level of government? Or is it a necessary use of power in order to maintain order? Will Roberts is the acting senior vice president for rights and justice at the Center for American Progress. And he joins us now live to answer some of these questions. Will, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. So this is the second time in a matter of weeks now that a lawmaker has been silenced for expressing an opinion. Will, is there a reason that this is happening more now? Or has this always been an issue? So, you know, I, th I think we need to be crystal clear about what's going on here. Uh, we see it both in the case of in, uh, Montana and with the Tennessee Three that uh, you know, far right wing, uh, MAGA extremist, even Republican lawmakers in state capitals are uh, exercising their power to silence debate that they don't want to engage in. Uh, and it is something, as you said uh, in your opening, that is happening more and more, and it's deeply disturbing. I want to look at exactly what, what took place, just so people understand. What exactly were their transgressions for any of these lawmakers, be it in Montana or in Tennessee? Did they deserve to be censured? Did they deserve to be expelled? And what exactly does breaking decorum mean? Are there laws around what defines decorum specifically? So, great question. In every legislature, just like in the U.S. House and the Senate, um, there are rules of decorum, of how you're supposed to conduct yourself on the floor during debate. And so those are rules that are governed, in most cases, by that legislative body. The members of that body vote on their rules at the beginning of each session. And so they are you know, widely agreed upon rules. Um, your, your question about what is decorum is interesting because you hear in both of these cases the straining um, that the speakers and the leadership uh, in Tennessee and in Montana have used to say that, you know, these members were breaking decorum. Uh, but there are um, sort of graduating levels uh, under legislative rules normally of sanctions. And so um, in Tennessee, for instance, in past cases, um, there was actual investigations that went forth before members were brought up to be uh, expelled. There were hearings and evidence brought forth. There, there's the option to censure a member, which is to discipline them, sort of, you know, put a, a slip in their record to show that they were disciplined. Um, expel, expelling a member or silencing a member for the session um, is an egregious overreach, uh, considering what we're, we're talking about here, which is members speaking up about legislative issues, gun violence, and combating that in Tennessee and you know gender affirming care here in montana um that the the leading republican legislatures just didn't want to deal with why do you think we're seeing this break out though at the state level i mean is there a reason why we're seeing this happen in state legislatures across america right now i mean you had mentioned you know MAGA republicans is this is this simply a new generation of leadership that is willing to speak out for their beliefs and go up against these quote unquote MAGA republicans why is this happening at the state level right now so i, I think you're seeing across the country um, an unfortunate trend of uh, the ruling parties in state legislatures trying to 
uh, over or over exercise their power, particularly in states where there are uh, super majorities in the legislature, um, and they are really overreaching in an, in an egregious way. I think you're. It is certainly part of a trend of you know sort of a lack of civility that we see even in Congress, frankly. Um, you know, mostly from uh, the likes of the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world, um, who uh, instead of wanting to have uh, a, a legislative debate on an issue, decide to shout people down, and in this case, decide to use the powers um, at their disposal to stop debate and to remove people from office. And and the key here is not just that they're removing members or silencing members, but they're removing representation, right, for the constituents that all those folks represent. And it's, it's part of a wider trend. I think it's even connected to, you know, the notion of how lots of uh, conservative lawmakers are trying to ban certain books and stop people from having certain conversations that at every turn, rather than engaging with ideas um, that they don't like, these extremists are trying to shut them out completely. I, I only have 30 seconds left here, but, but Will, how do you feel about the future? I mean, looking ahead, the divide between the two, par the two parties here, will it get worse? Does it get any better? I mean, is it possible to come back from something like this, or does the future look bleak for politics as a whole? Well, you know, the, the thing that I, I take part in is the fact that in each of these cases and many others, these lawmakers who are standing up uh, for the, these important fights and conversations that we have to be, have are speaking for a vast majority of young people, folks who are showing up at state capitals, who are asking for reform to take place, even as legislatures are trying to shut debate down. So I, I'm, I'm taking some hope in the fact that there is renewed uh, vigor around some of the things that are going to make us a uh, whole and inclusive democracy. Will Roberts is with the Center for American Progress. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We definitely appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for having me. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, the battle between Disney and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis heating up right now. Disney is planning on taking the case to court. Why the governor is saying that plan has no merit. We'll be right back. Three is a magic number. Three friends. Three wishes. Three meals a day. But it's sad that kids like me all over the country don't get to have three meals a day. Kids want to do good in school. We want to grow up healthy, and that's hard when you don't have enough to eat. But you can help. You can help end child hunger in America and make sure all kids get the three meals a day they need when you join No Kid Hungry as a monthly donor today. Your gift of just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, will help provide healthy meals and hope to kids in schools and communities across America. So I do think a lot of families struggle financially when they have to provide the three meals a day for their, for their kids. They do depend a lot on our schools for a lot of resources, including the food. Every kid deserves good food and a chance at a happy future. You can give them that chance when you join No Kid Hungry today. Call or go online right now with your gift of only $19 a month. Use your credit card and you'll receive this No Kid Hungry t-shirt to show you're part of the team that's helping feed kids so they can grow up healthy, happy, and strong. No Kid Hungry is helping my community in just a huge way. Again, providing nutrition, providing food to our students. And every time they grab a, a food item, they smile. They're happy to have their, their food in the classroom. They're happy to be provided with, a, actually, for breakfast, a full meal. It was a great idea for them to start having breakfast in the classroom for every child. That way, all kids are provided with something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are three easy ways you can help America's hungry kids get the meals they need to succeed. One, call the number on your screen. Two, go online to helpnokidhungry.org. Three, become a monthly donor today. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. 
right now. Get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Attention all business owners. If you had W-2 employees during the COVID-19 pandemic, you may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee with the Employee Retention Tax Credit. The deadline to file your claims is approaching. Call now to see if your business qualifies. This approved payroll tax refund program from the U.S. Treasury Department is set up to reward business owners who kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. There is no limit on the amount of funding. Plus, you can get access to your cash in a matter of weeks. You want a trusted partner who understands the IRS guidelines. ERC experts are standing by to help your business claim your COVID refund. You may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee. This quick and easy call can get your business the money it deserves. Don't miss the deadline to file your claims. Just call 800-360-1106. That's 800-360-1106. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis now responding to a federal lawsuit that Walt Disney Parks and Resorts has filed against him. I don't think the suit has merit. I think it's political. I think they filed, you know, in Tallahassee for a reason because they're trying to, to generate, um, you, you know, some, some, some district court decision. But we're very confident uh, on the law. Now, the suit says DeSantis weaponized his political power to punish Disney for speaking out against his so-called don't say gay bill. Florida State Capitol reporter Forrest Sanders has more now on the lawsuit. Lawmakers were talking about an elections bill as well as immigration, but that 77-page legal complaint dropped like a bomb, and now Disney v. DeSantis is all anyone here at the Capitol seems to be talking about. The feud that started with Disney's opposition to what critics call the Don't Say Gay bill last year... now heading to federal court. The company filed a legal challenge Wednesday alleging the governor and state officials were part of a, quote, targeted campaign of government retaliation. It's after lawmakers approved a takeover of Disney's special district earlier this year, putting in place his state board to oversee the about 40 square miles of land around the Orlando theme parks. Disney says the governor and new board violated First Amendment rights and contracts it signed with the district's old board, Reedy Creek, to maintain power. Quote, in America, the government cannot punish you for speaking your mind, reads the lawsuit. I'm very excited because I think they should have done it a long time ago. Orlando Senator Linda Stewart, among the Democrats who opposed the crackdown on Disney from the beginning, she felt like justice was coming. This is the only way that justice can be heard because they're not listening to the voices. They're not listening to the people. The lawsuit arrives as lawmakers inch closer to sending the governor a new Disney bill to reinforce the state board has authority over the district. While the Senate sponsor didn't comment, other Republicans did. The governor's not going to give up to, to what I know and understand. I'm not speaking for him, but um, Disney will lose this fight. Rep. Fred Hawkins is involved with the House's version of the new bill. He thinks it'll stand no matter how the company's legal challenge turns out. The special district was created by the legislature. The legislature can take it away and doesn't need to have a reason. Purely simply as that. Purely as simple as that. The governor's press team is also weighed in as he continues his trip overseas. Quote, we're unaware of any legal right that a company has to operate its own government or maintain special privileges not held by other businesses in the state. This lawsuit is yet another unfortunate example of their hope to undermine the will of the Florida voters and operate outside the bounds of the law. Disney's filing is likely just the first step in what will be an ongoing legal dispute. We expect that we'll see the governor file a response, and then we may have hearings at the federal court right here in Tallahassee. That's the latest out here at the Capitol. I'm Forrest Saunders reporting. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, people with autism on the road to independence. We're going to show you how technology is helping them overcome challenges to get their driver's licenses. That's after this. Every detail counts. That's why I live my life with Lexi B2 hearing aids powered by Bose. I value quality, cutting edge tech, 
and performance. When I began experiencing hearing loss, I knew I needed the best of the best. Lexi B2 hearing aids powered by Bose are app controlled and self-fitting, which means I can tune and customize them to my needs and preferences on the Lexi app and enjoy high quality hearing. No appointment necessary from ordering my first pair online to front door delivery and the secure discreet fit. Lexi B2 hearing aids powered by Bose offer quality, convenience, and exceptional customer support at every step in my journey. If you're ready to elevate to the next level with world-class hearing, take the lead and call or order online at LexiHearing.com to receive your Lexi B2 hearing aids powered by Bose today. Call 800-461-0637 today to find out how you can get your Lexis at 80% less than prescription hearing aid prices. If I had to replace my engine, the bill would have been over four grand. But my endurance auto protection plan covered it all. A broken AC unit costs over $1,800. A transmission, over $3,000. And an engine, over $4,000. Breakdowns used to mean paying thousands out of pocket until now. Go to endurancewarranty.com or call Endurance today and stop paying for expensive auto repairs. Call 877-204-1467 or visit endurancewarranty.com for a free quote. There's a 71% chance you could be overpaying for car insurance. That's why Experian has a new free tool that could save you money by finding you our best deal. And it works. Experian users saved an average of $900 per year. Go to Experian.com slash car and stop overpaying for car insurance. At Rue La feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names before they're gone. Get in to never miss out. Shop RuBaLaw.com today. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon and Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide free with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax free and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide. 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. The why is where curiosity is intentional. Because when you ask the why behind the news, the world opens up before your eyes. The why, tonight at 10, 9 central, only on Scripps News. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. So most people remember how they felt when they took their driver's test. But the experience is different for applicants with autism. National correspondent Jesse Cohen shows us how teens and adults on the autism spectrum have been getting help. Let's get our simulator on. Kids these days are no stranger to technology. And centered on the middle. It's been a part of their lives since they were born. Ready? So why not use that technology as an advantage in learning? This one is car control. Well, that's what staff at Nicholas Children's Hospital in Miami are doing. There are a lot of different things that virtual reality and immersive technologies can do. Now we're just starting, I think, to hit the tip of the iceberg with what we can really see happening there within that clinical space. Dr. Christina Potter is the hospital's supervisor of IT digital technologies. Great job, Natalia. She and her team are using research grants to study the effects of virtual reality on patients with autism spectrum disorder. Across the board, we've seen between a 30 and 60 percent reduction in our patients, just in their levels of anxiety and in their perceived levels of pain. So here she'll get up to highway speed. The computer says break, and she breaks, and it measures how much um, she didn't skid forward. Their newest program is DRIVE, which stands for Driving Improvements Through Virtual Reality Experience. And Natalia Guerra is currently a student in the program. I'm 21 right now. I'm currently in college. She's watched her friends and family get their licenses, and now she's ready for her time. Hopefully I could pull through. <laughs> 
They start inside the classroom. With her glasses on, hands on the wheel, and her foot pressing the pedal, students like Natalia become immersed in real driving scenarios. It's really good to practice at without having to worry about, you know, getting injured or anything. I have difficulties when it comes to the strength of the pedal and the speed. This is a great opportunity to test it out. And they don't slide into the driver's seat of a moving vehicle until the VR experience has fully prepared them. It's like an intermittent space where they can come, they can practice, they can make errors. Her mom, Maggie Guerra, tells us she didn't know if she'd ever see the opportunity for her daughter to get her license. And my part, I'm eternally grateful. And we need more of these, eternally grateful, because that is the key to her independence. Driving is kind of a big deal. And it's about independence, it's about self-confidence, it's about helping them uh, further their educations, further their career goals, and, and really further their progression as adults. Dr. David So is the hospital's senior vice president for digital and information systems. He feels there are misconceptions about autism. What people perhaps don't realize is that kids who are on the spectrum, um, it's not that they cannot learn. Um, they process information differently. It takes longer time for them to learn. They otherwise have the capacity, you know, the learning ability, the motor functionality to, to drive and to drive very well. But they have such heightened levels of anxiety that they don't even want to try. And I always let them know that if they start feeling any type of discomfort to let me know. Blanca Diaz, the lead instructor, has seen those anxious responses drastically change over time with her students. We've noticed just like their self-confidence, their motivation, they look forward to their future. Research at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia found that compared to non-autistic drivers, Drivers with autism were estimated to have fewer crashes, tickets, and suspended licenses. But currently, only one-third of autistic individuals without intellectual disability obtain a driver's license by age 21. Those at Nicholas Children's want to change those numbers and see this program in more cities. On the second one, 86.8%. Beautiful. We'll just work on smoothing it out. Their goal is to change the stigma and give those with ASD the confidence to get out on the road. So proud of you. <laughs> Jesse Cohen, Scripps News, Miami. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're going to share the story of a man's triumphant battle against COVID-19. We'll have the details next. Al, did you make that call? Honey, we already have Medicare. Why do I need to call? Alan, the Feldman said we may be able to get additional benefits with a Medicare Advantage plan right here in our zip code with zero dollar monthly premiums. Honey, what do you mean additional benefits? We turned 65, we got Medicare. That's all there is to it, right? I'm talking about Medicare Part C, commonly called Medicare Advantage. We have traditional Medicare, which is only Medicare Parts A and B, but not Part C. Wait. So not everyone on Medicare is a Part C plan? No, that's why we need to call because there may be plans available with additional benefits that aren't covered under Medicare Parts A and B. We don't have a Medicare Part C plan which covers everything in Part A and Part B plus extra benefits in Medicare Part C. What kind of extra benefits? There are great plans that may be available with extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Did you say dental? Yes, dental. Medicare Part C plans could include dental benefits that help cover routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, plus dental x-rays, fillings, gum disease treatment, and dentures. We need that. I'm calling. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans with additional benefits available that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. Call now. Now for your free 2023 no obligation Medicare benefits review. Call 800-817-7602. 800-817-7602. So I know that COVID claimed the lives of millions of people worldwide, but a Kentucky man beat the odds after nearly dying from the virus. Ricky Sayer with Scripps News Lexington was there when he was finally reunited with his family. 
After 504 days away, the hugs that greeted Greg Stone meant just that much more. Oh, it's a miracle. Seeing his grandchild for the first time. You look awesome, Daddy. Good. I can't get over it. I'm overwhelmed. I'm going to be weak. Spending time to reunite. I'm just glad to be able to talk to you again. I, mean, I never thought I could say that. Yeah. Stone had long COVID. The prognosis couldn't have been worse. And I went from 40% to making it to 1%. His wife forced to make a choice no one wants to make. When the doctors say it's over, that it's time to let him go, she said no. I'm not letting him go. When you love somebody, you never stop loving them, and you never let them go. He's here with us today because after a year at UK, he was transported to a Florida hospital. It's unbelievable. It truly is. Where after just a week, he got the lung transplant he so desperately needed. They saved my life. He is a true living, walking miracle. Sharing his message with the world. Love your family. Live each day like it's your last because you never know what tomorrow will bring. Tuesday, with a crowd that just kept growing. He made his return home to Mount Sterling. Congratulations, President. Stopping to say hello to friends and family. Best thing ever. <laughs> who've rooted him on from afar. And he needed to come home to this town because this is where his heart is. His town doing what they say they do best. We support our people. We support our neighbors and we support the people that we love and the people that are in this town. Yeah, I always thought I was liked in this community, never loved. I never thought that. But today, I know I'm loved. A love that no amount of physical distance can diminish. Wow, he is just lucky to be alive. That's great. Thank you so much for watching Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Delacruz.